So in this video, I will review the centerline tool in version 20 of the Mimix Innovation Suite. And this tool allows you to calculate the center points along a tubular structure, take measurements of the anatomy, and then export these measurements as a text file if you'd like. Typically, this tool is used for cardiovascular and pulmonary applications, but could really be used for any anatomy that has a tubular morphology. Today, I'll be using an aorta model as an example. And this aorta was generated by first segmenting out the blood volume within the artery. If you had a hollowed model depicting the vessel walls of the aorta, then the software is going to try to calculate the center line inside of the walls instead of the vessel, and that's not what we want. So it's important to have a solid part from which to calculate the center line. But to start, I'll go to the Analyze menu, and I'll hover over Center Line, and then select Fit Center Line, which will bring up this dialog box. Now there's only a few parameters for this tool. First is the smooth factor, which controls the level of smoothing performed. And smoothing will stop when one point in a center line branch deviates from its original position more than the smooth factor times the average branch radius. Now if that's confusing, just remember that a higher smooth factor results in a smoother center line. So most of the time you'll just want to keep it around 0.5 and that's fine. Um, in extreme cases of very sharp turns in the geometry, you may want to choose a lower smooth factor, though. In addition to the smooth factor, there are two advanced parameters, which you can adjust by hitting the Show Params button. So first is the resolving resolution, which indicates the size of the tubular structure that can be recognized by the algorithm. So a smaller uh, resolution will include tubular structures with a smaller diameter and vice versa. By default, this parameter is automatically set to two times the pixel spacing of your images. And for most of the time, that works just fine. It can be left unchanged. Uh, second is the distance between control point, which sets the distance between two adjacent control points uh, between which the center line is interpolated. Again, this is automatically set based on your images, but you can manually change it to a fixed distance if desired. Uh, so once the parameters are set, you can click Fit Center Line, and then it will calculate, and you can close out of the tool. And so under your analysis objects, you will see that center line appear. Um, and to visualize it, you can toggle the transparency of your part by clicking here and we can now see that red center line that was calculated. Now once it's calculated, uh, you can do some advanced operations on it by right clicking on it, and there's a number of different options you can have. Um, so if you wanted to edit those center line control points that were calculated, you can see them all here. You could click on one of these and drag them around, um, but most of the time you're just gonna wanna keep them in their optimal position. Uh, you can also split the center line if you wanted to split it into multiple segments. Uh, you could delete part of it. You could add a branch to the center line. Um, there's some center line post processing, so if it didn't quite come out smooth enough, you could do some additional smoothing or maybe filter out shorter branches. I'll show you that. So it looks like it calculated some of the branches for the arch vessels. Um, if I hit OK, you can see must have one of those must have been smaller than that distance that was set, um, so it deleted that. Uh, if you want to add a branch back in, uh, you could do add branch to center line, and then just click a uh, end point of that branch, and it will recalculate that center line part for you. Other things you can do are grow the set a segment of the center line. Maybe it didn't go all the way through the vessel. Uh, you could just click on that segment and then pick a point for it to grow to. All, again, all just manual advanced tools uh, for further ed refining your center line. Now, if we want to do a measurement along the center line, we'll go to the measure menu, hover over center line, and you'll see all the different measurements that you can make. Um, so let's maybe just choose bed's fit diameter for an example. And then you can basically take your mouse and click on any point throughout that center line that you would want to make that measurement, and it will then appear in your measurements tab up here. So we can also do other things like the sectional area. You can also do 
measurements such as uh, the tortuosity. So this works by clicking a start point and an end point, and it will measure the tortuosity between those two points. And if you ever wonder how it's calculating these, you can always click on this context help button right here, and then go to measure and click on the center line tool, and then click on center line measurements. And if we bring this up, you can see a description of each of these measurements and how they're calculated. Now let's say we want to take a measurement throughout the entire branch of one of these center lines. Um, a much faster way to do it than manually uh, clicking at each point is to click on your center line, click on the properties tab, um, and then we can choose which branch we want. So you can see as I click on these different branches, you can see them get highlighted in the 3D view. Uh, so let's just maybe choose the main branch one, and then we can click on export, choose which measurement we're interested in. I'll just do maybe ellipticity, and best fit diameter. Choose out, choose your output directory, file name, and hit save. And this will export out a text file that will contain those measurements at each of the control points in that branch. And so we, if we open up that text file, this is what it looks like. There's a legend at the top to help you decipher this. And so basically, it's just showing the coordinates of each of the control points the tangent vector of that control point, the normal vector, the binormal vector, and then the last two columns are those two measurements that we exported out, the best fit diameter and the ellipticity. So that's everything I wanted to show. Feel free to leave any comments or questions that you may have.